Yeah, hello guys, and of course, it's the one in only Dan Masgiola, a.k.m. Madam Petimouth in the house. Guys, karibuni sana hapa mtembei TV, na tukona president wa bunge huko na huru. Abari yako? Okay, mzuri sana. Kwa majina, Kamilu naitua nani? Okay, kwa majina, naitua Mr. Robert Makoha Wangoho. Bunge na manaji president na kuru. Asante sana kwa kunikaribisha studio zenu. Yeah. Umekaribiwa sana. So, unatoka pandegani ya Kenya? Okay, originally I'm a person from Western region of this country, specifically Bungoma County, Kondio Mina Zaliwa. But uh, apparently I've schooled in Nairobi during my early age now that my parents were around here. Ilikuwa Shaurimoyo. But later on, because of education, higher learning, university, Nimekua Uko, Laikipia University, Nakuru, in Nyauru, I mean. And I ended up settling in uh, Nakuru County. Yeah. When did you join politics? Politics has been with me, and uh, I have been with the politics. Uh, personally, Naiza Sema Kwamba ni meingilia maswale ya kisiasa around 2017 Vizuri. Lakini, we normally have the silent followers, so I was one of them for the previous years. Yeah. Okay, umesema unatoka western, wacha tuanzee hapo kidogo. Mm -hmm. Tuko na Nuru Maloba Okanga, na akopale bungela Jakaranda. Nuru Okanga aliweza kushikwa, na ijulikani kama ni rais, lakini Dennis Itumbi aliweza kutweet like, it's not the president who arrested Nuru Okanga, that Nuru Okanga, uh, president hakona vitu mingi za kufanya enyaazi anza kufatua na Nuru Okanga. And rumors has it like inaiza kuwa ni Oscar Sudi. First of all, do you think like the government walifanya vizuri ama vibaya kwa kushika Nuru Okanga? Walifanya vibaya because we are abide by the jurisdictional rights as Kenyans. We have the freedom of expression as provided for in Article 1 of the Kenyan Constitution of the year 2010. Therefore, if at all the government gave the reason th uh, that uh, it arrested Nuru Kanga based on uh, whatever that he spoke on the previous day, then it was wrong because whatever he was saying was right. Alikuwa anasema mambo ambaya naendelea. Na akasema reason why he atendelea kusimama na Raila Molo Dinga because Raila is a Democrat. So he alikuwa makosa makubwa sana kumushika uyo ndugu yangu Nuru Kanga. Yeah. According to the wife's message, she said that Nuru Kanga was arrested just when he entered the bathroom. Do you think that the government at least should find a way how to arrest people, at least alert people prior? Yeah. That was an indecent act. And I hate a government that double speaks. When it is a politician who has been impounded by the DCI at their homes, these people were complaining that at least they should have a decent way of getting those people, uh, uh, the suspects, arrested in a manner that is respectful. But that one, when it comes to the common man who is trying to fight for the rest of Kenyans, mm -hmm. you realize that they are doing the direct opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm being told that my brother was in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So it was so wrong and inhumane for them to arrest him even before Avaya nguo, you see mtu wako kwa bathroom, then weo na muaresi tu, without notice. I don't think when I'm around, uh, I'm within the country, you tell me that we shall be coming to pick you at this particular time. I'm not going to run anywhere. I just respect the order, and then I wait for the people. Alternatively, you can call me to come and report at a given uh, time, instead of coming to embarrass me, and even touch me or arrest me in an indecent manner the way they did to him. Yeah. yeah. So the UDA delegates that are trying to say that Nuruokanga should have found a way how to address President Ruto, even if he's in Azimio. Then that one will be hypocrisy. You know, if I want to tell you the truth, I should not hide anything. And especially if I want to speak something which I believe, I have evidence that it defines you. The way they wanted Nuru Kanga to address the president is not his opinion. 
whatever he said is what can define Nuru Kanga, and even if it will be me, still that is the manner in which I will have addressed the head of state. And I don't believe he abused him or used foreign language while addressing uh, the head of state. But what pained the government is maybe the reality which he spoke, of which they are now trying to blackmail him and the rest of us who have not spoken. So that in a near future, they think that now that uh, Nuru Kanga was arrested and harassed, we can now fear and sit back and relax. I can tell them for free that uh, actually we are very ready. And the moment some of us were given those positions and we came out to read from the front, it simply means that we are always ready to fight on. Kupigania wananchi wetu wa Kenya ambao wengi hawezi wakaondoka kwa nyumba wakakuja kwa National Assembly ambao wengi wanatamani watoke lakini hawana uwezo na wengi wanakufa njaa. Fadhali sisi tukufie mbele kuliko sisi pia wote tukae kwa nyumba njaa ituwe tukiwa tumenyamazia. Yes. Being that Nurokanga just did his KCPE exams, results of Itoka, na eni mtoto wa shule, sayi tunamclarify kama, uh, tunamclassify kama mtoto wa shule, do you think that Machogi could have addressed citizens on Nurokanga's arrest? Personally, I believe that as the CS of education, he ought to have come out and clarify this issue, which is uh, by now, even myself, who is a close friend to Nuru Kanga, I'm not convinced that my brother actually sat for that examination. And if he did, why would it be a, a fallacy, or a rather something which is more of a, a puzzle to the public? If NEC is in the office, it is very safe for NEC to identify the index number that uh, our friend used to sit for the exam and publish the results just like the way they publish the results for the almost uh, hundreds of uh, millions of students which cite for the examination. Yeah. And also Nuru Kanga himself. Should mature up, tell us. Aache mambo ya kiki. Tunataka tujue kama kweli ya mekoma na kweli tujue kwamba alipoteza 227 max peke yake ya kwe mwanafunzi wa kwanza Kenya. Eh, tujifunze kwa haki alitumia dawa gani hiyo mzuri because tunatamani eh bila anatafuta uongozi tujue kumbe this man is a genius na hii ita, itakuwa tu hivyo kama atakuja out atuambia kwamba indeed i only attended class for a single week i sat for the examination and miraculously i scored 401 marks and the challengers, or even ask us, how many of you will have done that? So you can trust me with the leadership position that I'm seeking come 2027. But if he continues hiding this, keeping quiet, telling us maybe lies, that one does not add an ounce to his weight. But instead, will and is likely to make people lose some trust in him. Yeah. Okay, suppose elections were conducted today in Matungu constituency, you as a lawyer, yeah. would you have voted Nurokanga as an MCA, suppose today? Okay, I can't be malicious enough to go maybe and vote in a constituency whereby I'm not a registered voter, but should it turn out that I am the registered voter in that particular area, I would have supported him because in politics, we look at this matter in all di dimensions. Just because this man has not maybe attained a degree, it doesn't mean that he's not a leader. From the manner in which Nuru Kanga speaks, it clearly shows that he can actually lead. Kwa kiongozi sio tumbokubwa, sio urefu, sio kingereza mingi. You can be a leader through the actions that maybe you show the public. And in him, we, we can actually ascertain, uh, justify whatever he normally do to show that he can lead, uh, I mean, the constituency in the capacity that he is seeking. Yeah. Okay, to kitoka hapo kidogo kwa nurokanga, tufike kwa bipartisan talk. Inasemekana kalonzo alipiga sahihi. 
So wa Kenya wanasema ni kama tunadanganywa. In your own opinion, what do you think? Okay, in as much as I support as Mio la Umoja, which includes leaders of the caliber of Kalonzo Msioka, as a leader now of Bunge la Mwananji, I stand with the people. I have diverse opinion. Kuna jina yenye huwa mnamuita huyu jamaa Kalonzo Msioka toka zamani. What is that name? Nickname? Watermelon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That name somehow defines him. Because we took him as a senior panelist in that uh, committee to steer the agendas of the people of the lowest rank in this country called Kenya. But uh, when he reached there, and by the way, allow me to state for the few who might not be aware that these people Kalonzo Msioka and Kimani Ichungwa have been pocketing up to a total of 50,000 for only two hours they were spending in that sitting. So you can ask yourself for about four months they have been in the same, how much they have pocketed. And a person of the caliber of Kalonzo Msioka, who by now we believe is a rich man, by, but he's not in office, is not being paid as maybe they expected when we were doing the elections. This is a man who took the opportunity to make good money. Are you getting that? And even when they said that they needed more time, like uh, for them to be added more that days, I just knew that it was a plan for them to continue minting millions from the poor Kenyan taxpayers. Are you getting that? So in my opinion, I don't think it was right for him to amend the signature, given that the issues affecting the common man whom we are fighting for as Bungera Mwananji have not been addressed. We wanted this hustler, common man, to be excluded from the housing levy. That's why we were advocating that it gets scrapped off. But unfortunately, they left that uh, issue away. At the same time, the VAT tax that had been implemented to the uh, hustlers of this country from 80% to a whooping 16%. It is unsustainable. That's why we were looking forward that the best they could do is for them to return it where it was initially. That is up to 80%. But again, they ignored that issue. Now, when you come out and tell us about the creation of a new office of the prime minister and the two deputies, that reminds us that, again, you plan to add as a burden because who is going to pay these people whom we have created offices for? Obviously, it's a common man who has already been overtaxed. Sasa, sisi kama mabunge wa we don't endorse that document. And at the same time, uh, I can say that... Uh, these people having spent millions on allowances and packs, other packs like the fueling of their cars, it was wrong for them to finish the talks, yet they have not captured the human needs. Are you getting that? So in the first place, if you are following the first attempt to have the talks and the second one which flopped, William Samoy Ruto himself, who is the president of Kenya, did not have good faith for the same. Yeah, because they placed Kainani there, knowing that he, he belonged to Azimio La Umoja, they removed him. Why did they remove him? It means that they knew that it was wrong for them to be placed there, for him to be placed there. And the need for him to be there was to sabotage the whole process, which was wrong. And for your information, Uhuru Kenyatta stabilized this economy, which was in jeopardy at one point, when the Azimio La Umoja leader was demonstrating every now and then. The situation calmed. Uhuru never used money. They held a handshake. They sat down on their own. So there was no need for forming these two panels from Kenya Kwanza and Azimio La Umoja. Wameongeza mzigo. We can believe that if in two months, first two months, for your information, it was gazetted that this panel had consumed a total of 110 million shillings. 
they were added time. Are you getting that? So that is to say almost 200 million shillings has, has, has so far been spent. The money which Uhuru Kenyatta never spent for him to bring peace and stabilize the economy, which they were, I mean, associating it with the uh, frequent demonstrations that were being led by the opposition leader. So that is where they went wrong. And we are demanding that uh, that document be considered null and void because it is not capturing the, uh, the needs of a common man who is a taxpayer. Okay, to kito kwa bipartisan to inge hapa kwa privatization of government entities, especially K, uh, KICC. Okay, thank you very much once again. Now, this is another issue that uh, the president is testing the waters on Kenyans. First of all, this man tested the waters when he, uh, he wanted to, say the, to sell the KPA. He wanted to pri privatize the Kenya Post Authority and sell it. But there was uh, an uproar from the community leaders from the coastal region, and they refused in totality. You remember uh, Abdul Somad, the governor of Mombasa, calling upon Raila Molo Dinga. They held a meeting, and later on they said that no port was going to be sold to an individual investor. And at the same time, they also threatened to, for the few CSs and the other principal secretaries which were in Kenya Kwanza government, also threatened that they, they were to form a political front, yeah, to forge a, a political front which they will use as their a future political vehicle. So after William Ruto seeing that this one was going to impact in a negative way in his political career, he quickly came on board and said that no one was going to sell what? To sell the KPA. Today, as I'm speaking, these years in his government called Simon Chelgui also came out yesterday to say that no one was going to sell the new uh, KICC. But initially, it was among us the 32, the list of 32 companies of parastatals, which the president had claimed that he was to sell. Are you getting that? So, before I proceed on the same issue, let, allow me to quickly point out some of the two or more issues that we are likely to face. Should Ruto continue with his plan of uh, privatizing key stakes instead of pumping money into them to improve them? One, should we have key parastatals of the caliber of KICC Rivertex, Pipeline, KBC, B.